Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at Noon. Two bank robberies take place in just a few days' time here in Lexington. Here what police are saying about this morning's incident. Co-workers of the man killed during a Lexington home invasion are now trying to help his family. Looking across the area, already scattered showers and thunderstorms in effect. Now, here's the deal. We go throughout the rest of the afternoon. That slight risk of severe weather for everybody. I'll break down details and also timing coming up in a few short minutes. WKYT News and Noon starts right now. And good afternoon from WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. There's a possibility of severe weather in the bluegrass this afternoon and evening. We've already seen some hail across parts of central Kentucky this morning. Now, this is a picture from one of our viewers in Frankfurt. And this is a WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day to keep you ahead of the storms. And let's go to WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris tracking the threat on our First Alert Defender. Micah? Yeah, and you see a lot of those hail pictures coming on, and I'll show you those as we go throughout the noon show. But that freezing level, I mean, you step outside and you're saying, well, it does not feel like severe weather outside. Typically, it's warm, it's humid, it's kind of nasty feeling. It's kind of cool outside and that freezing level is way low. That means these uh, hailstones can actually reach the ground pretty easily and that's why you're going to be seeing that be the main threat. Let's put this thing into action and you can see the front part of this system which RPM model has picked up on this very well. We showed this during the morning hours and now you'll start to see some stuff develop back toward the north and the northwest and then slowly glide through the region as we head throughout the rest of the afternoon. So right now no severe weather in the forecast as of right now, but things will change heading throughout the next several hours. Still a slight chance of severe weather for everybody as we go throughout the day. I'll break down the timing on this coming up in a few minutes. All right, Micah, thank you very much. And we are tracking breaking news in Kentucky's U.S. Senate race. A new WKYT Herald Leader Bluegrass poll finds Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes back in the lead. These new results show a shift away from Republican Senator Mitch McConnell just a month left before Election Day. Here are the numbers Allison Lundergan Grimes leading with 46 percent, Senator Mitch McConnell has 44 percent, Libertarian David Patterson remains a distance. Third. These new results are far different from the four point lead that Senator McConnell held in the late August bluegrass poll. The campaign ads in this explosive and closely watched race first started airing about a year before the election. And now, as you know, they dominate the commercial breaks with a month to go. I just spoke with Lexington Herald leader political writer Sam Youngman about these new results. He points out that other polls show McConnell leading, but he says it has been an eventful month for Grimes. She had President Bill Clinton in. She had this new ad out where she's shooting skeet and says directly to the camera, I'm not Barack Obama, which of course runs counter to every message that Senator McConnell's campaign has put out. So it's entirely possible that all these things add up together to account for this very dramatic shift. Now again, it's a dead heat considering the margin of error of about two points. We'll have more on the poll results throughout the day. You can also find out more at WKYT.com. Police are investigating a bank robbery in Lexington. It happened around 10 o'clock this morning at the Whitaker Bank on West Lowry Lane in Regency Center off Nicholasville Road. Now, this is the third bank robbery in Lexington in the last week. As WKYT's Jordan Valines reports, police are trying to figure out if all these robberies are connected. It's our top story at noon. Jordan? It was a scary start to the work week here for employees at Whitaker Bank on West Lowry Lane after police say a man robbed the business shortly after it opened. Around 10 o'clock this morning, a police say a white man wearing sunglasses, a gray hooded sweatshirt and toboggan walked into the bank, implied he had a weapon and demanded money from the clerk. K-9 searched the area and traced a scent to a nearby parking lot in the direction of Nicholasville Road, but the scent was lost at that point. Lexington police have been out here on scene interviewing a few witnesses, and police say the fact that this is such a busy area is actually helpful in this investigation because there are, are a larger number of folks who may have seen the bank robber. Now, this is the second bank robbery to happen in Lexington over the past week alone. The other one happening Wednesday at the First Securities Bank in Hamburg. That's always on their mind anytime they've got a crime like this is, do we have somebody who's done this before? So once they, they get to the video and start to look into those things, they'll start to try to match those up to other robberies. 
Now, police have still not found the person responsible for Wednesday's bank robbery. At this point, they're looking into the fact of whether or not today's bank robbery could be related to the one that happened last week. In Lexington, Jordan Valines, WKYT. Now, police hope surveillance cameras in the area captured video of the man and the vehicle he possibly left the scene in. The search continues at this noon hour for two men accused of shooting a man to death during a home invasion in Lexington. Police say the two gunmen killed Darnell Bates in his home on Addy Street early yesterday. WKYT's Mark Barber tells us how his co-workers are now stepping up to try to help Bates's family. The words on the sign behind me here at Goo Goo Car Wash on North Limestone are how employees here are saying their final goodbye to their general manager, 36-year-old Darnell Bates. Part of the team is missing here. You know, we're, we're a team, we're a family here. Employees at the car wash say Bates started working here five years ago and was just promoted to general manager two weeks ago. Police tell us he was shot to death yesterday morning by two home invaders. Investigators say when the men broke into Bates' house on Addy Street, he tried to fight back, but he was shot in the back. We're told the armed men were wearing dark clothes and masks and were last seen running toward Fifth Street and Broadway. Officers say they are still trying to figure out why the masked men killed the father of two. Coworkers say their frustrations are growing as their many questions go unanswered. Anger, frustrations, pain, it's just mixed emotions from, you know, different people, you know different people that knew him. We just wanted to be brought to justice. You know, he really didn't deserve it. He was a great person, brightened up the room every time he came in. It's a horrible tragedy. Trying to turn their pain into something positive, they've started a fund to help Bates' mother and daughter cover his funeral costs. I'm told about $250 has been donated to the Darnell Bates Fund so far. In Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you very much. And police are asking anyone with any information about that home invasion to give them a call. Four people charged in connection with a violent Central Kentucky robbery answered to those charges this morning. Police say Rico Penix, Robin Adams, Patrick Brand, and a 16-year-old boy robbed the Domino's last month and shot the clerk, 21-year-old Zoe Reed. Seth Frazier was also charged in the case for lying about the whereabouts of one of the suspects. WKYT's Rebecca Smith is at the Boyle County Courthouse now with the very latest. Rebecca? Four suspects connected to the shooting of Zoe Reed were in court today. Zoe Reed, who is 21 years old, suffered serious injuries during the robbery attempt at the Domino's in Danville last month. Rico Penix, Robin Adams, and Patrick Brand were all arrested in the case last week. The judge entered a not guilty plea on their behalf today. As of now, they are all still in jail. Seth Frazier is a fourth suspect picked up on tampering charges. He's accused of hiding out one of the suspects right after the robbery. All four suspects are set to be back in court next Wednesday. In Boyle County, Rebecca Smith, WKYT. Now, a juvenile was also arrested in Harrodsburg Friday afternoon. He's been charged with robbery and assault in the case. The leadership of the Fayette County School System will announce today how they're responding to a very critical audit. Last month's report by State Auditor Adam Edlin found no criminal activity, but Edlin says he is concerned about the financial practices and salary increases in central office. Superintendent Dr. Tom Shelton has defended some policies that were criticized, but he also says he is determined to improve the situation quickly. We expect to learn his course of action during today's special called board meeting. Meeting. Well, the newly married Clooney's jet setted from the canals of Venice off to a tropical island paradise. George Clooney and his new wife, Amal Alamuddin, are reportedly spending their honeymoon in Seychelles. The exotic location on the Indian Ocean contains some of the world's most beautiful beaches and luxurious villas. The couple is staying on the North Island, a lush, secluded area touted for its privacy. Seychelles is known for its high-profile clientele. It's where Prince William and his wife Kate spent their honeymoon back in 2011. All right, a good time they're having at this point. And coming next, the search for the Malaysian Airlines plane that disappeared back in March has intensified once again today. We'll have the latest on the hunt straight ahead on Kentucky's number one midday news. And also ahead on WKYT, swimmer Michael Phelps makes a big decision regarding his personal life and his career following last week's DUI arrest. 
find out what steps he's taking to get sober. Coming up on WKYT News at Noon.